still like, yo, can I give spoilers? But Yeah, go y'all. Welcome back to my channel. It's Sylvie, aka Frizzy. I'm feeling hype because you know what? An hour ago, I was not feeling hype. I came, I was like, yo, I'm finna record this video. The people go and get the video. And I fell asleep. I said, it's just not in me. I, I can't force it. It's not in me. So, a nap later. I can't like this nap's got me feeling fresh. Yes. Welcome back to Zeke's channel. Yeah, I, so I had a blood test today and there were like 14 bottles. I looked, I said, for me. So I think that literally it just took the energy out of me, but I'm back with a lovely peppermint tea. We have a running joke on Instagram because my good, good friend, Peggy Poo, who is from America, does not know how to, um, she, to, she don't know how to use a kettle. She doesn't drink tea apparently, so I've got a peppermint tea at the ready. Today, why are you here? What, like, Sylvie, what, what have you got for us? A book. If you watched my bookcase unpacking, then you would know that I was searching like a mad woman for a particular book. And the book is called The Deep by Rivers Solomon and I have finished the book and we finished share about the book. But we need to go through my seasoning charts and we break that down because this is the first book that, no, well we reviewed, we spoke about the Sex Life of African Women plugin. Go and, go and check that out if you haven't already. But this is a, this is a new book that I enjoyed. My friend Hopiana put me onto this book. Literally the first time we linked up, you know, you just link up with people and they just, just it's just, it's just mad. She was talking about how she likes reading books. I was like, so do I, so do I. The game is, is the book seasoned? How is it seasoned? So it works pretty simple. One out of five is CO2. Basically the book is dead and you're just like, <gasps> you're gasping for breath, yeah? Two stars is the book is salty. You know people try and season food by just putting salt on it and you're like, it's better than nothing, but really? Three star will be air, salt and pepper. And I'm not talking about like scotch bonnet pepper, I'm talking about black pepper that you, like basic pepper, like, you know what I mean? Like basic. Four stars is mixed herb. So we got, I mean, we got the, the salt and pepper and that is feeling a bit better when you put some mixed herbs and you, you mix it up and you marinate it for a little while. And five, 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 five star is all purpose seasoning. At that point, if I said it's all purpose seasoning and I know what I'm talking about, then you gotta go and buy that book, you know what I mean? Is it? Okay, that's where we're at. Am I gonna tell you what the book is now? What I'm going to do right about now to do is subscribe and like. If you're not already locked onto the channel as a subscriber, subscribe. The Deep is written by Rivers Solomon. Rivers Solomon is an African-American non-binary author. And I went on the Wikipedia, but you know Wikipedia be telling you some mad stuff, so. But Wikipedia is saying that Rivers is now based in Cambridge in England. Is it true? Is it not? But yeah, apparently Rivers is in the UK. The book, I mean, is the title, how do I feel about the title? Not title, how do I feel about the cover? The book, how do I feel about the cover? It's RT, I mean, uh, it's okay, I'm not, the book cover is not the reason why when I picked up the book, you know what I mean? You know, you see some book covers and you're like, oh, I need to get that book. It, it, it didn't do that for me, but it weren't, it weren't like fire artists, but it was okay. Effectively, you have one of the Wajinru people 
and then you've got a whale. It's just basically in the deep sea. Hence the book is called The Deep. Deep it? It's The Deep. Yeah. It's, it's nice. I mean, like I said, it's not, the artwork's not pifting, but it's cool. It's, it's that. Right. But the story. So the story is, let me break this down. Let me break it. Just, sorry, I've got, when I think of this, I'm thinking of like R&B and sensual music. Because I've just finished a book, I've just finished a book today. It's, I've just finished a book today. And I was like, you didn't need to finish that quick. That's the one thing that I want to complain about. Um, sorry, Rivers. How many pages did you give me? Hundred and sixty-three pages, and the book is not that big, so it goes very, very fast. I will say from the jump, I did not put the book down at all, and I say that because there was no boring parts. If you read a short book and there's boring parts, brother, brother, there's something wrong with the book. I'm just, just, I don't make the rules. I'm just telling you, the book from when you pick it up, you are properly engrossed in the book. It's a good, it's a good book. It really is. So Yetu is the community's historian. So how it works is, ah, okay, uh, I'm, ah, so just to be clear, this is a fictional book, but. It's one of those books, and that's one reason why I, I suppose I rate it a, a bit higher. It's because it proper had me thinking like, rah, how much, you know when people talk about conspiracies, let's just take, take the word conspiracy out for a second. How much do you really know about who, what, where lives in the sea? Yeah, we've seen the worlds. Didn't they just find a fish that had like full, full racks of teeth? Like a racks of, like they just saw, they just found a fish, so. I ain't never seen that fish before. Okay. Can I just, can I just, whoever made up the rumor, rumor, Chinese whisper, whatever the, it was, just ripped the bandaid off. They lied, because now I'm bleeding. I ripped the bandaid off and I'm bleeding. So you lied to me, you lied. But yes, so the book, the plot is, so the Wajinru people, I don't, that's the thing, you know, when there ain't no film, you just be pronouncing stuff, hoping that you're saying it right. Wajinru, I'm gonna say Wajinru, I feel like that's it. So they are the descendants of African slaves who were pregnant, the women who were pregnant, and they were thrown overboard during the slave, trade journey so yeah so the woman they died but their children lived so the kids are in a womb and basically when they were born like they came up with fins and things and they were they were waterborne they were they were ready they were i was gonna say slipping and sliding but they <laughs> did that they were they was under the sea under the so in my mind, I'm between Avatar, The Little Mermaid, and The Hood. It's, I'm just, I'm in all them corners. So the story is told generally through the character of Yetu. Yetu is the main character. Yetu is the community's historian. So like I said, the Wajinru people, they live in the deep deep sea and in order for them to live such a good and peaceful life and harmonious life let's say they don't actually hold on to any of their memories so any so the existence as to how they came about that there are people that live up in the land which they call the two-legged people or just the whole their trials and tribulations they have no recollection of it only the historian keeps those memories and it's passed down through the ancestors. So Yetu is the historian. Yetu didn't want to be the historian. Yetu was, people. someone gets chosen. So Yetu was 14 when she was given the role and it doesn't specify like clearly how old Yetu is, but I'm thinking like a bag of years has passed. I'm thinking Yetu is a grown ass woman at this point. So she, 
wie ein Kapitän. How can you not drink peppermint tea? Like, really? If you don't drink peppermint tea, do better. We're, this is a peppermint tea channel. <clears throat> cool. So, once a year, so this is where we lead into at the beginning of the story. Once a year, the, there is a day, it's called Remembrance Day, where Yeti will gather in a, it's like a self made tent that the people will build. I'm thinking like some sort of mud mud pit tent, but you're in the water, so. I mean, that, 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 that itself is, how do you build stuff in the water? It sounds silly, but how do you? Because I put my gel nails in the water and they start going soft, so it don't make no sense. But then, when I was a kid, was anyone, hey, I'm just on a tangent, like, we've come to realize that you're getting books, but you're also getting a lifestyle. It's, you know what I mean? It's, it's a frizzy, it's a frizzy experience. But when I was a kid, I used to get these toys and it was like sand toys. So they looked mad. And then once you could build, like you could build sand communities in the water. Is that, is that making sense to you? But you could do all of that. So if you can do that, then I'm sure you can build a bag of stuff under the water. I'm telling you, listen, we, there could be Atlantis and a whole bag of stuff under the water and we, we ain't no nothing. I've been saying I know about whales and about sharks. What else do you know about the water? They have said it's literally a different world, so. But yes, so it's Remembrance Day and during Remembrance Day, Yetu shares the memories with the whole community. But the the job's been too much. The job's been, a lot of people say, you only got one job. Well, the one job is a very hard job. The job of retaining all of the ancestors' memories. And when we're talking about memories, just look, let's liken it to like in a dislike, in a real life. How much of you want to really know what happened during slavery? Like, yes, you might get taught parts for me. I won't read or watch Roots or any slavery based film. I think it's too traumatic and I don't want to experience or even think about what people have gone through. Like I know I know enough what they've gone through. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to see it acted on TV. But that's just me. So imagine you holding all of the history in your mind. But on top of that, no one else knows it. So you're holding it by yourself. So it's not even like you can talk and discuss with people and share the pain or you know build on the trauma or just relieve yourself together only you only you go for it so that's what she's going through it's just it's mad it's mad the plot is the plot is very simple in terms of this, this underworld where african slaves and um, the descendants there they built their life but you're really learning the complexities of of one living through knowing almost too much, knowing a whole history and having to navigate how you are in the present, which is not far-fetched because if you think about a lot of experiences, and I would say particularly the African-American experience, knowing what went on potentially you're still walking on the same roads and those same trees that people are lynched on and you know the plantations and that so it's not far-fetched to believe but it's just when you're reading it you're like this is so intense for one person to bear and Yetu cannot bear it so Yetu ends up ducking out leaving her people in remembrance so basically the historian's job is to give your people the memories and then you sort of ease them through it and then you take the memories back. But Yetu ducked out, so she left them with the memories. And yeah, she leaves it. She leaves them. She says, yo, peace out, uh, uh, this is too much because it's killing her. It's effectively killing her because it's just, I just think of like a load and load and load and load and load and then you'll just pop off like, what are you gonna do? To the point where there'd been at least one occasion where Yetu had sent herself out 
to where like the sharks hunt and that. I think she was bleeding as well. And she was just ready to be to die. And then a marble, which is effectively your mum, a marble yeah, is your mum, came and found Yeti and was like, well, like, this is madness. Stop this, my child. Like, come back. But it's also the mum saying it's madness. But if you don't know the pain that she knows, is it madness? So that is a that's an that's an interesting bond, and I, I find that so with this book I was able to really think about stuff in context of now, like life now. For example, so that particular scenario, there were loads of like young women who were going through severe mental health issues, but if family members so like your mum or dad, one do not believe in mental health or cannot relate to it, they think it's madness. They think you're just doing the most and being dramatic, and I've got experience of that where they just like come on behave like like get on with it. Why, why are you being silly? But it's like the trauma, if I cannot articulate the trauma and it's not shared trauma, how do I actually, how do I, how do I live through it? So yeah, the book, it was, it was, it was great in that sense. There's one thing that makes me give it mixed herbs, not all purpose seasoning. So some of the chapters now I understand that it's the like the ancestors narrating those parts, but it was just very unclear at first. All of these random characters are coming up and they're like stories. No, that's the thing. It's not their stories. These random characters are coming up and it's their actions, but I'm just thinking, bro, who are you? It's just, it just seemed a bit out of pocket because it, there wasn't a clear lineup or indicator. There was only a couple chapters saying that, but it was enough to make me think this is a bit too much. I just think it wasn't clearly filtered in, if that makes sense. But Yetu's parts are really, really strong. You also get a real sense of Yetu getting to know humans like the two-legged people and understanding a bit more about them she forms a really good relationship with one woman Ori and I don't want to tell you too much about Ori because I want you to follow the journey I think that's one of the that's one of the strongest parts of the book the relationship that Ori and Yetu build together because you get to see a real two people from two different well, that's the thing from two different lifestyles, but there is there is a common there's a common ground. There's something that there's like a spark that keeps pulling them back together that makes them relevant together. And how it ends is really really cute. It's so cute. It's just it's cute. It was just like how I would wrap up the book. It makes you question. You know when people talk about like the red pill and the blue pill, what would you choose? This book is that real life question being enacted out. Would you rather have no history and live a blissfully, almost ignorant is bliss lifestyle, or would you live with the knowledge of the pain and suffering, but find a way to live through it? I know personally what I would. I, in every life I would pick to know, know my history and find a way to live through it and one, know my history to make sure that what happened could never happen again but also I think there is a very very big strength about resilience and building, building from the, from, from the rubbles, yeah. I really liked the book. It was just, for me, it was, it was a chance to explore. It was a chance to go into someone's mind and see their wild thoughts be, be brought to life. And that's what I felt I got from this book. Yeah, I did like that. But yeah, I would, I would, I would put it on my reading list. I would, like I said, it's a short book. It's really not long. I don't, it's not a feel good book. I'm not gonna sit and say it's a feel good book. It is a thought provoking conversation. I kind of feel like this book I could read in a book club and have some banging conversations with people about because it makes you think out of the box and just think in general about 
things beyond you. And that, me like, me like it very much. Yeah, on to the next book, on to the next book. If you like the video, please subscribe, like, make a little comment in the section. And if you've read the book, let me know, let me know your thoughts, that's a good thing. If you've read the book, let me know your thoughts, particularly on the relationship between Yetu and Ori. I wanna know your thoughts, for sure. Peace out.